Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for January 19th, 2022. Glad that you are with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. Today is Museum Selfie Day, National Popcorn Day, Artist is Outlaw Day, Brew a Potion Day, Good Memory Day, Apparently Gun Appreciation Day, National Tin Can Day, Tenderness Towards Existence Day, and World Cork Day. Let's go ahead and get started. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. We pray to you, O oh Lord. You hear us in the morning. At sunrise we offer our prayer and wait for your answer. Our first psalm for today is, O Lord, who may abide, uh, Psalm 15, O Lord, who may abide in your tent, who may dwell in your holy hill, those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue and do not do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor these, those who fear the Lord who stand by their oath, even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall not be moved. And Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for God is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. God gathers the outcast of Israel. God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. God determines the number of the stars. God gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. God's understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. God casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. God covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. God gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. God's delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor God's pleasure in the speed of a runner, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear God and those who hope in God's steadfast love. Now the thanksgiving for baptism. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O Lord our God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism you have poured out your grace upon us and claimed us as your beloved people. By the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to love and serve you always and to love and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Our first reading is Genesis chapter 9, verses 18 through 29. The sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was peopled. Noah, a man of the soil, was the first to plant a vineyard. He drank some of the wine and became drunk, and he lay uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Then Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both of their shoulders, and walked backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan, lowest of slaves shall be he, shall he be to his brothers. He also said, Blessed by the Lord my God be Shem, and let Canaan be his slave. May God make space for Japheth, and let him live in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan be his slave. After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. All the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. From Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 12. Therefore, let us go on towards perfection, leaving behind the basic teaching about Christ and not laying again the foundation, repentance from dead works and faith towards God, instruction about baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection for the dead, and eternal judgment. And we will do this if God permits, for it is impossible to restore again to repentance those who have once been enlightened 
and have tasted the heavenly gift and had shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the age to come and then have fallen away since on their own they are, were, they are crucifying again the Son of God and are holding him up to contempt. Ground that drinks up the rain falling on it repeatedly and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is cultivated receives a blessing from God. But if it produces thorns and thistles, it is worthless and on the verge of being cursed. Its end is to be burned over, even though we speak in this way. Beloved, we are confident of better things in your case, things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust. God will not overlook your work and the love that you showed for God's sake in serving the saints, as you still do. And we want each one of you to show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope to the very end, so that you may not become sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. From John chapter 3, verses 22 through 36. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside And he spent some time there with them and baptized. John also was baptizing at Anon near Salem because water was abundant there. And people kept coming and were being baptized. John, of course, had not yet been thrown into prison. Now a discussion about purification arose between John's disciples and a Jewish person. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan to whom you testified here, he Here he is baptizing, and all are going to him. John answered, No one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who is the bride, who has the bride, is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice, for his reason may be joy. For this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. He must increase. I must decrease. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks about earthly things. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testified to what he has seen and heard, yet no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted his testimony has certified this, that God is true. He whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has placed all things in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but must endure God's wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our readings for today, we have continuation of the saga of Noah. Um, This is one of the things I I have probably railed against it before, but I will again. The the movie Noah with, um, who was that with? I don't know. Um, Terrible. (laughs) Terrible as far as biblical accuracy. One thing they actually got right was this scene that usually we don't hear about, that Noah goes and makes a vineyard, grows grapes, makes wine, and drinks about all of it, right? Um, Now, it could be, you know, he's probably a bit of a lightweight after being on the boat for all this time and and whatever, but he gets sloppy, stupid drunk. So drunk that he is passed out and completely naked. Well, Ham, one of his three sons, comes in and sees him. Now, it could just be that he sees his nakedness. There are suggestions that maybe he takes some privileges with his father, which is super gross, but, you know, there you go. Whatever it is, he leaves and he goes and tells his brother, which is literally half of the world population now knows about Noah's impropriety, his drunkenness, his, this sort of, like, uh, terrible state that he is in. Well, Shem and ha- uh, Shem and Japheth, the two other sons, they go in with a blanket and they walk backwards and they cover the nakedness and, he come, and they come back out. When Noah wakes up, he is not only very hungover, I'm sure, but is also not very happy with what Ham has done and so curses him. 
So a couple things here. First, we have the humanness of Noah. <laughs> he is a flawed character. Um, he is righteous with God. He is in right relationship with God, but that doesn't mean he's perfect by any means. Um, another thing, and, and this really sort of speaks to one of the purposes, I think, that Genesis has is it's a establishment of the world, right? This is, this is a mythos. This is, I, I don't mean that as a, this is something that is untrue necessarily, right? But it is a group of stories that tells a people who they are and whose they are. It, it informs how, why the world is the way that it is. And one of those things is that there are people in our world that are not nice. They are not good. This also connected to this ref self-reflection that is like, we're the best. God has called us as, as the best. And you sort of filter in maybe as time goes on, sort of some, some nationalistic sort of ideas and that sort of thing. And you have this growing idea that the Canaanites, this group of people, who we remember forward from this, and probably at least when it's written, the Canaanites are these enemy peoples who are in the land that God has promised to their ancestors, to, to the Jewish ancestors, to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, right? And they are coming back to this land again um, after Moses and now uh, probably Joshua. These Canaanites, these terrible people who we're just about to vanquish or who continue to be this enemy of God's people, not only are they bad people, right? They're also cursed and they've been cursed from the very beginning. Let me tell you the story of their great, 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 grandfather. When our great, 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 grandfather dealt with this, right? They did, their ancestor did this terrible, horrible, no good, very bad thing. That's why they are so terrible. So go ahead and, you know, kill them with impunity. There's, there's no problem because this is, this is just payback. This is this long, long time vendetta, right? So part of what's going on, and we'll see this unless it skips it over, but the, um, the scripture immediately after this is sort of like these are the descendants of all of these of these three sons and you have a very clear sort of who's who of here are the good people here are the bad people and here are the people who are kind of could go either way right um that's part of what genesis is doing it's laying the groundwork it is informing this people why the world is the way that it is um, so I think that's one of the major reasons for this story is it's really telling not as much so about who Noah is. It's telling us more about Ham and the reason for this really, really long standing sort of enmity between these people groups. Then we have from Hebrews. So remember, we closed yesterday's with this idea of, of you know, you're you're just you're basic, you can, you're just an infant that can only handle milk. Now the author says, therefore, let us go on towards perfection. Let's leave aside all of those basic things and gives this list of sort of fairly basic teaching about Christ. Um, and that we're going to go beyond those things. We don't have to lay that foundation again. So the things to, that are basic are repentance from dead works and faith towards God, right? You have to repent from your past mistakes and you want to have faith in God. Great. Um, I'm not going to tell you about baptism. I'm not going to tell you about laying on of hands and praying. I'm not going to tell you about resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. This is all really basic stuff. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to talk about some deeper things, right? We're not, this is not about praxis. This is, this is more, this is a theological work, really. Then we have this really interesting statement about it's impossible to restore again to repentance those who have once been enlightened and have tested the heavenly gift, tasted the heavenly gift, and have shared in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away. This is a deeply misunderstood passage. 
I've had multiple people come to me and say, this means I'm toast because I used to believe and now I'm questioning my belief and I'm not sure what it is. Hebrews tells me it's impossible. There's no way that I can recover from this. I am, I might as well just become a complete heathen. That is not the intention of this passage of Hebrews by any means. What I think the author is telling, again, it's more of a rhetorical device. All right, we figured out the basic stuff. Let's now go on to this deeper stuff. Let's, let's move past that stuff. Now we're going to get into the really, the heavy stuff, right? The deep stuff. Um, he's not talking about backsliding, or they are not talking about backsliding. They are not talking about, um, you know, you grew up in the church and you had unanswered questions because you weren't really allowed to have any questions. Um, you started learning more and realized that maybe this is not for you. Um, you know, whatever that sort of thing, that's not what is being talked about here. Um, what's being talked about here? I think is more a, again, the hardness of heart, a, a decision not to believe. If you've made the decision not to believe, it's really hard to come back from that, right? Now, it's not impossible. The author of Hebrews seems to say so, but I don't believe that it is, right? Um, but again, the, I think the point of this harsh language is more as a, don't even go there, right? Don't. Don't go off in that direction, um, which in some ways is understandable, but in many ways is very unhelpful, I think. Anyways, um, because, and then it sort of shifts because even though we speak in this way, beloved, we are confident of better things in your case, things that belong to salvation. God is not unjust. Um, God will not overlook your work and the love that you showed for his sake in serving the saints as you still do. And we want each one of you to show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope to the very end so that you may not become sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Again, it's a girding on. It's a suggesting, keep going, right? Don't fall off. Continue the work that God has started in you. Continue that. It may be a rough road, but continue it on. Continue to sort of be imitators of Christ. Um, it is a, an attempt to be hopeful. It is an attempt to sort of um, encourage. It's a tone and a vibe that maybe doesn't, doesn't work with sort of the way that we talk about these things. Um, but I think that's the intent. Unfortunately, again, it has been heavily misunderstood, uh, maybe even weaponized, and that grieves me. All right, then we have from John, we have this sort of side story about John the baptizer. So Jesus is in his disciples, they're, they're talking to people, they're baptizing people. Uh, we don't actually have a whole lot of stories about Jesus baptizing. It's just sort of this, oh, by the way, Jesus is baptizing. And we get it as a description of what's going on with John the baptizer. And his disciples come to him and say, hey, what's going on? All of these people, we had, used to have huge crowds before, and now they're all going to Jesus. They're all baptizing, being baptized by him. They're not coming to us, right? We're, we're losing our influence and all that sort of stuff, right? Um, this is a common concern, right? With those who have had authority, right? It's, it's the ongoing concern of the modern church, right? As we see in decline, oh, more people are going to nothing or more people are going to the mega church or more people are going to blah 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 than other things right um and there's this sense of institutional panic wait a second 
We're the people people are supposed to come to. We're the ones who have authority. We're the ones who are here to, to baptize. And John has a really interesting perspective. John says, well, cool, great. My purpose here is not to bring myself glory. My purpose is to bring God glory. My purpose is not to be the Messiah. My purpose is to prepare the way for Messiah. So if more people are going to him, because God is granting that to happen, if, if the Holy Spirit is at work to bring more people to him, then I rejoice. I am not the groom in this situation. I'm the friend of the groom. I'm the hype man. I'm the one who is standing beside the groom. But the glory is not mine. The glory is Christ's. The glory is his. So if more people are going to him, great. That is a good thing. I wish more people would go to him. This should be our mentality. That God is at work. That if more people go to such and such a church, or come to ours, or go to some other one, right? If more people are searching and seeking, what are we doing? Are we doing the the things that we are supposed to be doing? Are we teaching what we are supposed to be teaching? Are we serving in the ways that we are supposed to be serving? Those are the questions we should be asking. But this institutional panic about, well, it's not like it was in the 1950s. We don't have the same influence that we used to. We don't have the same glory that we used to. Is that actually the question? Or is our job to be the best man, the hype man, the wingman? Those are a lot of male heavy images. But, anyways, we're the one, we're the bridesmaid. We're the one who brings glory to the groom. We're the one who brings glory to Christ. It's all about Christ's glory, not about ours. And when we miss that, and I'm going to argue it's really easy for those in positions of authority, and especially with successful ministries and and influence, to get caught in that mindset that it's all about me. It's not. It's about Christ. And when we miss that, we miss the whole point. So John says, great. He must increase. I must decrease. God is good. So those are our readings for today. Let's go ahead and join our hearts together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Eternal God, we thank you for being with us today and for every sign of your truth and love in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for all works of Christian compassion. The good earth that is our home. Examples of wisdom and righteousness. Energy and strength to share your love. Each new insight into your grace. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for this day, for the chance to serve, to bring glory to Christ. Gracious God, we remember in our own hearts the needs of others, that we may reach up to claim your love for them and reach out to give your love in the name of Christ. Especially we pray for Orthodox and Coptic churches. Those subjected to tyranny and persecution. 
those who are outcast or strangers, those who offer welcome and hospitality, the renewal of those who despair. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Mary, who had successful surgery yesterday and is recovering from that. We lift up an online prayer request for Seth, who's dealing with uh, some issues with ministry. We pray for the synagogue in Colleyville, Texas, and the entirety of the Jewish and Muslim communities. We lift up an unspoken request. We pray for Amy's father, who is in declining health. For Jeff, Bill's brother, who has COVID-19. For Jillian, Julie's friend's daughter, who is in the hospital. For friends of Beverly Kennedy's, uh, her friend's daughter, who's in the hospital. A friend's sister with health issues and a friend's brother with cancer. We continue to pray for Juanita, Dennis's mother. Carrie, a friend of Brittany, uh, family and friends of Freddie Marler, Mary, friend of Linda, Charlie, Bill's friend, my grandmother, and Philip. God of all who worship you, make us one with all your saints and with any who are in need. Teach us to befriend the weak and welcome the outcast that we may serve the Lord Jesus Christ and live to offer him glory. In his holy name we pray, amen, and we continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you for joining me today for this daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button. Go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our Readings today came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, and our liturgy came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA. Go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org. I'm not sure if I said that. Also, our Facebook and Instagram accounts. Donate on our donate page. All that good stuff. Thanks for joining me. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.